Hey everyone, welcome to this ep this episode of the Spot Doctor Skin Stories, and I have a special guest with me today, Dr. Julie Greenberg, and it's great to um, have you on, Julie. Um, so, Dr. Greenberg is a licensed naturopathic doctor who specializes in integrative dermatology. She's the founder of the Center for Integrative Dermatology, a holistic clinic that approaches skin problems by finding and treating the root cause. And that's what we're gonna be talking about today is really truly a naturopathic approach to dermatology. Dr. Greenberg holds degrees from Northwestern University, Sanford University, and Bastyr University. She lectures on naturopathic, um, at naturopathic medical schools and speaks at conferences across the US on topics on hair, skin, and nails. Dr. Greenberg is the program chair for the Naturopathic and Integrative Dermatology series on LearnSkin.com, a 20-hour course CE program for doctors that discusses evidence-based alternative approaches to treating dermatological conditions. So welcome, Julie. Thanks, Trevor. Thanks so much for having me. I'm glad, happy to be here. It's so great to talk naturopathic dermatology with somebody else who gets it. <laughs> so this is, it's so great to have you on. So, but let's start first by explaining to everyone, can you tell me what is naturopathic dermatology, integrative dermatology? What does that mean? That's a great question. So integrative dermatology is a little bit different than naturopathic dermatology. So I'll start with naturopathic dermatology. So you and I are naturopathic doctors, which means we operate under a couple principles. I think two of the key principles that I use in approaching derm cases are one, treat the root cause and two, treat the whole patient. So when we look at conventional dermatology, right, dermatologists are trained to look at the skin and that's it. Like somehow the skin is a separate organ from the rest of the body. So they're not going to really ask patients too much about other things that are going on around different systems of the body. But as naturopathic doctors, we are always thinking about what else is happening in the body and how is that affecting other systems? And absolutely the skin is affected by other systems, primarily the gut. Um, and it, so in order to treat the root cause, we have to treat the gut. And so that's a naturopathic approach. Um, not just the gut. I mean, we look at adrenals and really everything that's going on in psychology. Um, with integrative dermatology, that term means that it could be conventional dermatology. So we could be talking prescription pharmaceuticals, things like steroids, Accutane, antibiotics. Um, but there's something else that they're bringing into play beyond just what you would get from conventional derm. So maybe they are prescribing like an herb or they are starting to think about some of these other systems, but it's not always as deep as naturopathic um, approach to dermatology will be. So I think, thank you for explaining all that. And that's really great. I, I think what would be helpful for people to understand what's it like going in to see you as a patient? What, what is a typical appointment like with you? Yeah, so it's pretty different from seeing, let's say a conventional dermatologist. Um, or any doctor, right? If you're, if you're seeing an MD in the insurance model, you're probably gonna have seven to 15 minutes with your doctor. They're getting in, they're asking you a few questions and they're gonna leave you with like a prescription for one or maybe a couple things. And that's, that's the whole visit. Um, for me, because I'm a naturopathic doctor, and even though I specialize in dermatology, I'm primarily a naturopathic doctor. My first visit is usually about 90 minutes long. And I am asking about all sorts of things going on in different parts of the body. So we definitely want to talk about the gut. Um, you know, want to talk about sleep and your nutrition. What are you eating? That's so important for various uh, types of skin disease. Um, are you exercising? Are you getting sleep? We call those the fundamentals of health, right? No one can be healthy unless they're eating the right things, moving their body, getting enough sleep, getting sunlight and have good relationships. So we need to check in on all that too. But then all the other systems, and then primarily, um, I think where it differs from a conventional doctor is I will do 20 up to 30 minutes of patient education as part of my initial visit. And now with COVID, um, I'm doing telemedicine primarily just to keep everybody safe. So I do a screen share and it's, it's PowerPoint presentations and we go through for whatever their skin condition is. So if it's acne, eczema, rosacea, alopecia areata, we go through a presentation talking about like, what are the root causes? Why is this happening to you? 
Um, and then I want them to get that understanding because we don't get user manuals when we're born. And I feel like doctors don't do enough explaining. It's really the patient that needs to understand because you know, we have a limited time with them and then they go off to deal with it. And if they don't understand what's happening in their body, that's really a detriment because they, they also need to understand the treatment plan and why we're doing various things. I never want a patient to look at a treatment plan and be like, I don't know why I'm doing this. That's a fail for me then if they don't understand why they're doing each and every component, whether it's topical or whether it's um, like an oral supplement. So, um, well, thank you for explaining all that. Now, let's talk about gut health because you said that that was a really important part about treating the skin. And of course, this is something that naturopathic doctors have been talking about for a very long time. And it's so great to see the research now um, sort of catching up with what naturopathic doctors have been talking about for, for many, many years. Um, so what, what do you find to be, why do you find that the gut is so important for skin health? Yeah, and I couldn't agree with you more. I mean, we've been talking about the gut for 30, 40 years and, you know, it was poo-pooed before, like, no, it's not the gut. And, you know, well, everything we would talk about probiotics and, you know, restoring gut health, it was like, no. And then you're right, the research is really coming out now. We can put the pieces together. I mean, we still don't have all the answers, but it really is coming together and fits into that puzzle explaining why the gut is so important to skin health. Part of it is because 80% of our immune system comes from our gut. And you know, a lot of this chronic skin disease is an inflammatory systemic immune problem. So if we look at something like psoriasis, that's even in the autoimmune bucket now. Um, and we know that there's systemic inflammation going on. And somebody who has psoriasis, it's not just that they have skin plaques and they have a skin disease. They are at risk for what we call comorbidities or other health conditions um, pretty much around the body. So whether it's kidney disease, uh, fatty liver, depression, so psychological conditions, cancer, there's really not an organ system you can find that a psoriasis uh, patient is not at increased risk for because of this a problem with increased immune um, system inflammation. And how the gut relates is, you know, our whole gut from our mouth to our anus is pretty much connected to a blood supply. And the whole purpose of our gut is so that we can eat and extract nutrients. And that's really that what that tube is for. And the immune system is waiting underneath there because it's connected to the bloodstream. So normally we wanna see well-digested food and nutrients coming through. It goes into the bloodstream and the body says, great, we need that. Let's send that out to every cell in the body so that we can live and repair and survive. But sometimes we eat bad things and bad things can get through. And so the immune system is at the ready in the bloodstream throughout the entire GI tract in case something bad gets through. And the way the body deals with that is by creating inflammation. And that is not a bad thing. We need inflammation to repair wounds, again, to address you know, bacteria or mold or viruses that get into our system. But what we wanna see is an acute response. We wanna see inflammation only for a short period of time so that the body can conquer whatever that thing is that got in. And then everything calms back down again and we go back to you know, calm immune system and calm health. When we see these chronic skin conditions like eczema, like psoriasis, like rosacea or alopecia areata, which is where people lose their hair, it's an autoimmune problem. It really is being driven from the gut. They have what we call gut dysbiosis and no, they no longer have like a calm situation in their gut. All of this stuff is leaking through, we call it leaky gut and it gets into the bloodstream and the body is constantly trying to deal with this influx of whatever it is that's going wrong. So bad types of bacteria, whether it's E. coli or Pseudomonas or Candida overgrowth. And the body's only defense at that point is to create inflammation to try to kill off this bad stuff that's leaking from the gut into the bloodstream. Well, the blood goes everywhere. Our skin is our largest organ. Every part of our skin is connected to the bloodstream, same as the gut. If we cut ourselves, if something gets through, our immune system has to be there. So. It's a huge blood supply. And uh, we start getting these problems um, in our skin um, and it really is derived from the gut and it's just not being a healthy gut environment and leaky gut. Okay, and you mentioned psoriasis. 
What other skin issues? You mentioned eczema as well. What other skin problems? Uh, honestly, most chronic uh, derm disease. So not like if you get a puncture wound and then you get an abscess, or right? that's not being driven by the gut. That's a foreign pathogen or bad guy who got into your skin and now your body is creating inflammation at a localized place and pus and that needs to be drained. But when we are talking about really most conditions that people would go see a dermatologist for, acne, rosacea, uh, the alopecia areata, the hair problems, um, eczema, really um, almost all of them, even just when people start saying like, all of a sudden I've got like this rash and I can't get rid of it. Um, there's topical stuff that's happening where they could have like a colonization of staph on the skin, but usually we don't get to that point unless the gut is off too. So anyone that's dealing with chronic gut conditions, I mean, chronic skin conditions, I need to look at their gut and I do two main tests, a stool test and a urine test called an oat. Um, and every single time it shows me, here's what's driving the inflammation in the gut. We go clean up the gut and the skin issues get better. Okay, and the stool test is which one? Uh, so my preference is I like the GI map by Diagnostic Solutions because that gives me a broad spectrum uh, peek into their gut. It tells me if there's an H. pylori problem. It gives me particular strains of good and bad bacteria because I am looking for specific strains and how much is there of good guys and bad guys. Uh, if there's a protozoal, so uh, we can have protozoa overgrowth, things like Giardia or Blastocystis hominis, worms. And I also like that test because it gives me um, digestive health. So I get to see how the pancreatic enzymes are working, if there's enough bile, if we're producing enough secretory IgA. So that's definitely my favorite stool test. Okay. Okay, great. And then um, as far as addressing pathogens, um, what, what is your kind of, what is your general approach with that? When you find something, some sort of dysbiosis going on, what is your approach to addressing it? Yeah, so I always find dysbiosis because I'm only treating people with skin problems. So I, I already know there's something there. Um, it depends when I get back the labs. I, I use both the urine and the stool test together to kind of give me a holistic picture of what's going on. And there's rarely just one thing going on. So I need to kind of look at all the pieces of the puzzle, like how did you get here? Because the body's pretty resilient. So if you just had overgrowth of one bacteria and that was it, you're not gonna have eczema, you're not gonna have rosacea, you're not gonna get psoriasis. That's really a point where there's so much going wrong that the body is just unable to cope. And I, I talk to patients, I say, it's like we have a bucket, right? And as long as the bucket's not overflowing, then the body can deal with it. Like, yeah, there's problems, your gut isn't perfect, my gut isn't perfect, but no big deal, the body compensates. Where we have a problem is when we have too much, too many different problems going on, that bucket starts to overflow. And then you start to see the problems, you know, with the rosacea or whatnot. So I'm analyzing those tests and trying to see, okay, so there's multiple problems. Um, I know I need to address all of them. We can't address all of them at one time. That's th these problems don't come on overnight. Uh, it takes, you know, years for them to develop. Um, and so I have to go at them one by one. Some of the ones I like to go after first, I like hitting H. pylori as one of my first ones because I say it's upstream. H. pylori is overgrowing in the stomach. And when it's causing a problem, um, it tends to monkey with the stomach acid. It doesn't like how acidic the stomach is. So it decreases the production of acid and it actually makes it not acidic enough. Well, that's great for the H. pylori, but it's not great for us because we need really acidic stomach acid for two main purposes. One, every time we eat, we commit a dangerous act. We take foreign things, bacteria, mold, viruses, we put it in our mouth and we swallow it and put it like right into our, the middle of our body. That's crazy. Well, first stop is the stomach. It's a fiery acidic cauldron. And that really kills off most of the stuff that we bring in, right? We really want the food and not that bacteria coming in. Um, so when H. pylori monkeys with that, that allows things to survive the stomach acid and we can get conditions like SIBO, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. The second problem is we're not digesting our food properly and particularly our proteins if our stomach isn't acidic enough. And then that starts going through the digestive tract and um, it causes problems because it's not fully digested. In the colon, we have not good bacteria that um, will ferment um, undigested protein and make some particularly bad byproducts that 
that contribute to psoriasis, for example. So if there's H. pylori, I got to fix the stomach acid because that's upstream. That's going to affect everything afterwards. I also like to address candida pretty early on because there's lots of studies that show that um, in the presence of candida, uh, the immune system can't as efficiently fight a certain bacteria. And so it's suppressing the immune system. It will also form biofilms with H. pylori. Um, so those are two that I like to go at first, even if I see all this massive bacterial overgrowth, you know, I can start to hit the bacterial overgrowth, but if the candida is there, if the H. pylori is there, those are problems that have to be solved in order to clean up the rest of it as well. Right. And using herbal medicine, um, conventional medicine, what, which, um, so I'm an herbalist. I tend to go for the herbs. Um, there are certain situations with um, like staph aureus infections on the skin where I will use like a topical mupirocin and antibiotic ointment, or I will prescribe um, like a doxycycline, an oral antibiotic, a short course if there's a really bad staph infection on top of the skin. But primarily I like to use herbs and supplements and kind of work with the body. Um, I find that they are effective and they do less monkeying with the system. So you know, I, I do know when I prescribe the doxy for the staph infection, I may be causing a candida bloom because an antibiotic, you know, pharmaceuticals are very narrow in their scope. They're going to go in. If you're taking an antibiotic, it is only going to kill bacteria, not any sort of yeast or mold and vice versa for a fungal. Well, the herbs are, and then you can get an overgrowth. So I think as women, we know if you take antibiotics, you might want to take a probiotic or eat some yogurt so you don't get a vaginal yeast infection. That's why we get it with an antibiotic because it's killing off bacteria and candida is like, whoa, look at all this room to grow. Now's my chance. And it does that you get a candida bloom. With the herbs, we don't get that really because herbs are what we call broad spectrum, right? A plant out in nature has to fight bacteria, mold, viruses, all sorts of things. And so while we do have certain herbs and certain plants that we use more for certain conditions, they're still broad spectrum. They're still addressing other things. And so it's not like when we use, um, you know, something like uh, grapefruit seed extract or caprylic acid for a candida infection that we're completely ignoring bacteria because they're also antibacterial. So I, I much prefer herbs to pharmaceuticals when possible. Right, right. And I mean, I, I think what you're saying too is that for the most part, we are able to, at least I find just using herbal medicine, nutritional medicine, you know, using those kind of agents works for most people. Occasionally when you have somebody who is at eczema, psoriasis, rosacea for a very long period of time and acne as well, um, you, you, you know, sometimes you have to use a little bit of both. Sometimes you have to use, I mean, at least to, to get like a quicker, faster recovery, using a little bit of um, conventional medicine, using um, medications can sometimes help speed up the process. But the idea is that you're supporting the body. So you only need those medications temporarily just to kind of calm down the system and get things under control. But I think what happens oftentimes is people go on the med prescription medications or even um, over-the-counter medications and they stay on them for too long. And that's when we really get the problems with them because if, we, if, we, if we're not supporting the body and addressing the root causes at the same time, you're just, it's just gonna still be festering there, right? You're, you're absolutely right. And we see this time and time again. We see it like with topical steroids. I treat a lot of infants and kids, and the story is always the same from parents. Well, I, when I first started using steroids, it was great, and this, the eczema would go away. And then we started having to use more and more, and we started having to use stronger and stronger. And now we put the steroids on and the eczema doesn't even go away. And it's exactly what you're saying. There, there can be a time and a place for steroids. Appropriate steroid use is no more than one to two weeks at a time. And if it comes back after that, then you know it, there's much more to the picture. You can't keep going back to steroids. 
Um, this, that's not the root problem. They're not deficient in steroids. That's not what's happening. Uh, but I do have patients who the infants are suffering so much. I mean, they're, they're literally bleeding every morning in their crib. You know, I've had parents find ants crawling on their child in the morning, trying to eat the blood because infants will scratch until they bleed because pain is better than the itch of eczema. And, you know, sometimes we will, um, you know, keep kids or, you know, even adults on Zyrtec while we're trying to clean up the problem because they're just so itchy or use sparingly a little bit of steroids here and there just to like make life livable until we can clean up the skin and just get rid of the eczema for good. But there certainly is a time and a place for conventional pharmaceuticals. It's just where it obviously is not addressing the root cause. As you said, you, you need to turn and, and look to, you know, how do we how do we address the underlying root cause and fix this underlying problem in the body? Yeah, and as naturopathic doctors, we really believe that the body is wise. And if we're just, we're giving it the right support um, rather than just suppressing a symptom, then, um, then that can create so much more healing in the body when you just give the body a little bit of support. I mean, in a natural state, we are, our skin is healthy. I mean, it's just, that's what it's designed to be. And so most of the time we just need to just give it a little bit of extra support rather than just trying to put a bandaid on things and, and cover it up. Right. Yeah. I mean, I, I liken it to, you know, when a baby's crying, you can go in another room, you can shut the door, you can make the crying go away, you know, in that level, but the problem still exists. And, you know, a lot of, a lot of, unfortunately, conventional dermatology is more suppressive in nature than curative. Um, you know, whether we're talking about um, injectable biologics for psoriasis or, you know, something like steroids for eczema, you know, conventional dermatology is trying to kind of squash and push the problem down and as you said, the body is smart. It's, it's inflamed for a reason. It's, it's having these symptoms for a reason and just pushing it back down didn't solve anything. And so at some point it's gonna come back up. Like the minute you go off biologics, the minute you stop the steroids, I, I tell patients, it's like if you're holding a really big coil down, when you finally get tired and let go, it's gonna pop up higher than it originally was. And that's kind of rebound inflammation. So. We really have to ask, yeah, why is the body doing this? I tell patients, I know you're frustrated. You want your skin to look and feel better, but your body has not betrayed you. It's always on your side. It is always trying to do the right thing. And it is trying to fight this gut dysbiosis by creating this inflammation so that it's not floating around in your bloodstream. And I promise you, you know, we're going to go in and when we help with this underlying root cause, you are going to see the skin calm down. You're going to see the inflammation calm down and it just, it happens every time. Yeah. Amazing. So I know you believe like I do that um, it's important to, when we're addressing the root causes to do both internally and externally. Can you talk a little bit about how you do that in your practice? And if you have any examples like with eczema or, or um, uh, we haven't really talked much about rosacea. Rosacea is very interesting as far as um, what's going on, in, particularly with the microbiome that yeah, rosacea is interesting. Um, we know that there's increased incidences of H. pylori and SIBO, particularly with rosacea. And a lot of my rosacea patients have full-blown GI disease, so ulcerative colitis, Crohn's, IBS. Um, and for a lot of them, it's kind of sad because the rosacea predated, let's say, the SIBO and ulcerative colitis. It was, it's the body signal, like something's the matter here. You know, I can't really cope with this. And I just think, oh, if we had just dealt with the rosacea, you know, when it first came on, we could have avoided all this GI disease. It's so much harder to treat ulcerative colitis once it's on than just, you know, your run of the mill leaky gut, gut dysbiosis. Um, but you, you do need to treat, um, I, I like to treat both because the skin has its own microbiome and the skin has its own requirements for health. So as part of my patient education, we, we talk about pH, skin pH. We go back to like junior high school with those litmus tests and you know, we talk about what is pH and there's acidity and there's alkalinity. And um, so it's, it's a scale from like zero to 14 and uh, neutral is seven. So blood and water is neutral. And I have patients guess, what do you think the uh, proper pH of skin should be? And everybody is always like, I don't know. <laughs> then I tell them, what if I give you a hint? And I tell you that there's a fatty acid mantle on top of the skin. And then they're like, okay, well, it must be acidic. And I say, correct, you're a genius. 
So it's true. Skin needs to be acidic. It's, it really needs to be down in the four to five, 5.5 range to be healthy. And that does a lot of things for it. One thing in particular, we have these tremendous things on our skin called antimicrobial peptides. So it's, you know, when we were evolving, it wasn't like, huh, I wonder if the skin is ever going to come into contact with anything bad. Like, no, that's its job. It's its job to be out there and defend us from keep bacteria, mold, viruses, you know, mosquitoes, worms, keep, keep all that stuff out. So that is its natural job. And it's obvious it's going to come into contact with them. So these, these things on our skin, the antimicrobial peptides have names like germcidin and defensin. And it's their job to, to protect us. So I think of them as like superheroes of the skin and they're there and they're always at the ready. So if somehow Staph aureus gets on my skin, my germcidin and defensin, they are just like gonna go to town on it. And I am not gonna get a staph infection. It's not gonna, it's not gonna be able to live and stay on my skin because my skin is nice and acidic. But when that skin pH goes up and it becomes more neutral or alkaline, germcidin and defensin, it's like they get frozen. And so instead of being able to go to town on staph aureus and beat it up, it's like, uh oh, well, I see staph aureus, but I can't really do anything about it. And they're basically immobilized at this higher pH. And we know um, in studies that, for example, um, in skin with eczema, it has a higher pH. And there's a direct correlation to the severity of the eczema uh, correlating to a higher skin pH. And that is because Staph aureus wants a pH of 7.5. It can grow basically um, undeterred at that rate. It's, that's the pH that it likes and dermcidin and defensin can't go in and attack it. So uh, we talk about skin pH and part of the Western hygiene protocol, unfortunately, is using soap and hot water. Well, soap by nature is alkaline, it's made with lye. So they run anywhere from like seven to 12, like Johnson's baby shampoo that we're supposed to put on baby skin has got a pH of like 12, so it's not really great. And we use hot water and we strip off the fatty acid mantle, we raise the pH of skin, and um, so we talk about botanicals that we can use that are gonna help restore that acidic pH to skin. So some of my favorites are aloe vera gel, um, hydrosols, and good old fashioned apple cider vinegar because Staph aureus hates nothing more than apple cider vinegar. So it's a little stinky, but it's really, really effective for eczema and getting that staph colonization on the skin down. And I will say, in addition to actually dermatological disease, um, skin pH is important for healthy skin and aging. So we will get fewer wrinkles and dark spots the more acidic our skin is. And they have found this in studies. So all those things, like I use aloe vera gel and rosemary hydrosol on my skin every day. And, um, you know, I just turned 49. So wrinkles and dark spots are of concern to me. But um, yeah, I have fewer wrinkles now than I did in my early 30s just by keeping my skin acidic and using natural oils and uh, really things with an acidic pH on the skin to put it in a state that it wants to be and it can be healthy. Yeah, that's one of the reasons why I created the Spot Doctor skincare line was because I found out about that research and I was so frustrated with all of the natural skincare products out there, all the moisturizers, the cleansers, they were super high pH. And I couldn't believe I could, that I could not find a moisturizer, a cleanser, especially those two products for the face, for the body that didn't was, you know, that wasn't really under 5.5. I mean, like they were all over way over 5.5. And so that's why I created the, the Spot Doctor skincare line in the 4.5. Uh, six to five pH range for the face and under 5.5 for the body. And it's amazing the difference that people see and something as simple as that can help people with different skin issues, because like you're saying, it provides that supportive environment for the skin to function. This is truly a naturopathic approach. Just give the body the support it needs, the right environment and let it do its job. You know, you put it back in the right pH and it's amazing. Like all of a sudden things clear up, things get better. Um, and we have that more youthful glow. So that I love all that, that you're talking about definitely um, aligns what we, what we talk about at the Spot Doctor. So, um, well, it's been amazing having you here today to talk about integrative dermatology, naturopathic dermatology. How do, how do people find out more about you, learn you know, how to connect with you? 
Yeah, so I'm a licensed naturopathic physician. I can see patients in California, Oregon, and Washington. Um, so if patients are interested in connecting with me, you can go to my website, which is integrativedermatologycenter.com. Um, as you said, my clinic is the Center for Integrative Dermatology. Uh, for patients not in those three states, um, you can check out if you're looking for more information, um, either as a doctor or a patient, and you want to get a little bit more into the science, um, you can head on over to learnskin.com and check out that 20 course series that I ran um, uh, for naturopathic and integrative dermatology. A lot of these things that I talk about um, are in the courses. So there's a course called Skin pH and Skin Disease. Um, you know, there's courses on naturopathic approach to treating psoriasis, naturopathic approach to treating eczema, to acne, gut health, and uh, skin health. So um, they can get a lot more information. All the all 20 courses are free. And if you happen to be a doctor or a healthcare professional, you can get free um, continuing medical education credit by doing the courses as well. Yeah, love, um, love having that available to people. I did have Raj on the Spot Art Care podcast a while back. For any, anybody wants to, to check out the director of the program and the interview I did with him, we did do an interview on the Spot Art Care podcast. Well, again, Julie, thank you so much for coming on and thanks everyone to, for joining us today on the Skin Stories and we'll see you next time. Bye, Trevor.